is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Place that has a sense of history, and indeed it is. See, taking the president from the spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713 223 TIPS or email investigates at clicktohouston.com. This is Channel 2 News Today. We are very much alive! Good morning. This morning, Joe Biden wins big. He won Texas, which is the big one of the biggest prizes on Super Tuesday. Those results, though, still coming in. We're tracking them, and we'll keep you updated throughout the morning. Out of North Harris County today, firefighters had their hands full with a large house fire overnight. Massive flames there. Coming up, we'll get the latest uh, on the battle to get it under control. And get ready for a wet Wednesday. Britta has a timeline of the shower so you can plan your day and details of a dense fog advisory right now at the coast. All right, good morning. It's uh, Wednesday, March 4th at 4.30. I'm Owen Conflenti. Good morning. I'm Tania Wright. Justin is in with a check on the roads it's and a little bit of fog on the coast we just mentioned. Yeah, not only just fog on the coast, but you can see the low cloud. I mean, everything mm -hmm. is hanging super low this morning. So, you know, good advice is just kind of give yourself a little bit of extra time. We're starting to see the roads get a little wet as well. That also is going to be a bit of an issue. Nothing too heavy. I won't steal British thunder. I'll let her tell you that. But <laughs> you get the idea. It, it is going to be a factor so far mm -hmm. today. Oh, also, that heavy truck that we had earlier, which was at I-10 of 45, that cleared about 10 minutes ago, so Ray, okay. So okay. Nice. And it's a morning like this that's great to have two meteorologists on the same desk because it is going to be a busy morning. We have wet roads, we have fog, and then as we get closer to lunchtime, we're expecting that round of thunderstorms, and that still could produce some severe weather. Let's take you outside and show you what we are waking up to, and this is what you can expect for your morning drive. The Southwest Freeway is going to be sloppy mess. Uh, we have wet roads. The good news is it is fairly light rain, but that is just enough to cause a few issues. Meanwhile, we have a front that's moving through, so our north counties looking pretty good in terms of the fog. You have rain out there, but at least you do have lower or better visibility. Unfortunately, lower visibility from Harris County down to the coast. That's where we're hanging about a mile to two miles, so some light patchy fog. We do have a dense fog advisory for our coastal counties uh, for later on this morning, so we're going to keep that in place until the front moves through. We have these light scattered showers, nothing too heavy, but as we get closer to 10 a.m., 11 a.m., we're going to increase those storm chances up to about 80%, and a few of them could produce downpours, thunder, lightning, even hail and gusty winds. We'll have details on those threats coming up. Justin, over to you. All right, thank you very much, Bert. As I mentioned, that uh, truck, we had, we had a heavy truck accident about an hour ago or so, right where I-10 and the good North Freeway meet up. Notice that there's nothing out there now, so that is clear, thankfully. That's nice to see that. Uh, we don't need that this morning. As Bert mentioned, roads are a little wet. I uh, turned the radar on, so if you're up near Montgomery, near Lake, uh, Lake, or Lake Houston, that is, over from Conrad, 
Road, then working your way from the East Texas from Cleveland on down to Roman Forest. That's where we're seeing some of the wet weather. So keep a watch on that. Fog's the other big issue. Otherwise, everybody else sitting in the green so far. We'll continue to watch not only that, but we've got a little bit of a, a fire right on the north side there near TC Gesture and Beltway 8. A little bit of slow as some looky loos are happening. Otherwise, guys, you can see the drive time's all anywhere from about uh, 10 to 25 minutes coming in from Sugarland. We are following some breaking news this morning. The U.S. military says it's conducted an airstrike against Taliban forces in Afghanistan. This strike comes just days after the U.S. signed a peace deal with the militant group in the Middle Eastern state of Qatar. A U.S. military spokesperson wrote in a tweet that this attack was to counter a Taliban assault on Afghan government forces in the southern Helmand province. Now to decision 2020 this morning. If you are just waking up with us right now, Former Vice President Joe Biden is leading the delegate count this morning after big wins on Super Tuesday. While many of you were sleeping, he was declared the winner here in Texas. But California is still outstanding, and there's still a lot of delegates up for grabs there. We'll have a much bigger look at the presidential race coming up in just a few moments. Well, the big story locally, complaints about those long wait times in several locations around the city. Now, in some cases, people voted hours after those polls officially closed. Some even stayed in line well past midnight. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli joins us now live from the Harris County Clerk's Office with what election officials say caused this big issue. Vincent. Tanaya, the issue, unprepared precincts with a high number of voters. Some voters had to wait a whopping six hours in line. Others waited until 1.30 this morning to cast their ballots. At TSU, the line stretched long. Election officials say they had eight voting machines, but there were so many voters, 14 more machines had to be brought in. Similar situations happen across the county. Election officials say the new voting center system, which allows voters to cast their ballot at any center in the county, plus high turnout at certain centers, caused the delay. I agreed to share shared locations. The different political parties did. And we didn't want either side to feel slighted, like if we we gave one side 10 and one side 5, and then they had a rush hour, so we started out equal. Now, as the day went on and we saw that the Democratic turnout was much larger, we were constantly bringing in more equipment to several locations. And coming up at 5.30, hear what voters at TSU had to say about the situation. Reporting live from the county clerk's office, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Vincent. And as the dust continues to settle, it appears former Vice President Joe Biden had a super Tuesday indeed. Just before 1 o'clock this morning, he took Texas, which had 228 delegates up for grabs. So right now, here's a current look at the delegate count from NBC News. Senator Bernie Sanders now stands in second place. Those delegate numbers numbers will change because we're still waiting for those votes to be tallied in California. NBC's Tracy Potts is in Washington now with who won that. Tania, it was a big night for Joe Biden, especially there in Texas, just weeks after many declared his campaign on life support. We are very much alive! Yeah! Former Vice President Joe Biden, the projected winner in nine Super Tuesday states, including a surprise win in delegate-rich Texas. It's a good night. It's a good night. And it seems to be getting even better. They don't call Super Tuesday for nothing. As of this morning, Maine was still too close to call, and the biggest prize, California, too early. Senator Bernie Sanders was leading there. I tell you with absolute confidence, we are going to win the Democratic nomination. Sanders, the projected winner in Colorado, Utah, and his home state, Vermont. Michael Bloomberg, on the ballot for the first time, picked up four delegates in American Samoa after spending half a billion dollars on advertising. No matter how many delegates we win tonight, we have done something no one else thought was possible. Senator Elizabeth Warren lost her home state, Massachusetts, but indicated her campaign is still alive. It is an awesome thing. You are going to do it right here in Michigan next week. Hi, aloha. Tulsi Gabbard is still on the ballot and hoping to hang in as a long shot. It's very much looking to be a, a brokered convention where there will be no settled nominee on the first ballot. Lines were long across the country. Democrats energized to beat President Trump. 
President Trump was tweeting as those results were coming in, focusing mostly on Michael Bloomberg and Elizabeth Warren, not the front runners. In Washington, Tracy Potts, KPRC Channel 2 News. Now to a few uh, races we've been keeping a close eye on in the race for Harris County District Attorney. A Democrat Kim Ogg is the incumbent uh, and has uh, the lead at 55 percent of the vote. On the Republican side, Mary Nan Huffman came in first with 64 percent. We asked Channel 2 legal analyst Brian Weiss to weigh in. He says he's surprised Ogg did well in the race. Courthouse insiders thought that morale in the DA's office was low, turnover was high, young prosecutors were getting beaten on a daily basis in county court, an occasional scandal. It looks like Kim Ogg is going to be the Democratic nominee for Harris County District Attorney without a runoff, and that's a huge victory. In the race for Harris County Sheriff, Democrat Ed Gonzalez is the incumbent and won against Jerome Moore and Harry Zamora. On the Republican side, there is going to be a runoff. Joe Dana took 49% of the vote and Paul Day had 29%. Republican Senator John Cornyn won his Senate primary. He's the incumbent and beat Dwayne Stovall with 76%. Mary M.J. Hagar, a veteran, earned 23% of the Democratic votes. She fell short of capturing the nomination outright and advances to a runoff May 26th. You can find the results from other races on the ticker at the bottom of the screen this morning and on our website at click2houston.com. You can also find some Twitter reactions to Super Tuesday. Uh, you can just look for all that in the Decision 2020 section. 439 here at Channel 2. New this morning, a massive fire destroys a home in North Harris County. Firefighters were there from three different departments working together to knock down the intense flames. It happened around 1.30 on uh, the North Sam Houston Parkway near T.C. Jester. The fire was so strong it ca caused part of the home to collapse. Right now, no word on what uh, started this fire or if the home was vacant at the time. A desperate search for survivors underway right now after a powerful tornado tore through parts of Tennessee. The governor there says uh, the people of his state need more hope than anything else right now. Coming up, uh, helping hands and signs of hope in the midst of that tragedy. And we are tracking scattered showers on exact track radar. Our roads are wet, so allow for that extra drive time. Meanwhile, as we go to the afternoon, we could see some stronger thunderstorms. I'll take you through your timeline coming up. And of course, we want to remind you about our new traffic page at clicktohouston.com called What's Driving Houston? It includes traffic times and maps that are updated every 10 minutes to help you plan your commute, especially on days like today when we've got rain and fog out there. You can visit our page by going to clicktohouston.com slash traffic. Time right now, 440. .com. Good morning. Your time is 442. Here's a live look along seawall. Very hard to make out anything. It's very murky and we have dense fog. A dense fog advisory has been issued until 9 o'clock this morning for Chambers and Galveston County. For Matagorda County, Missouri County is just directly along the coastline. So if you're waking up in Surfside Beach, give yourself that extra time out the door. Meanwhile, our rain is very light right now. That fine mist, drizzle, constant light rain showers, but our roads are wet. Take it slow. We're expecting more rain as we go throughout the later half of this morning. Morning. Take a look at those thunderstorms getting closer and closer to Austin. I'll time them out for when they are going to arrive here in Houston coming up. Over to you. Okay, Britta. And don't forget you can track the weather by staying tuned here to Channel 2. And don't forget you can download Frank's free forecast app to your smartphone or tablet. And it's always a click to Houston.com slash weather slash weather. We've got the forecast there in the live radar, which is super helpful. Uh, South by Southwest, you know, it's a huge music festival, one of the biggest events held here in Texas. That's right, coming up at 5, will it fall victim to the coronavirus crisis and be canceled? What Austin's mayor is now saying as he tries to make a decision about that. All right, well, here are some more results from Super Tuesday.
Time right now is 446 on this Wednesday morning. Live look outside at the Southwest Freeway. You can see the fog out there and the roads are wet, so you're going to want to give yourself some extra time. Britta will have your full forecast coming up in just a few moments. Now to a look at some of our top stories around the nation. The search for survivors continues 24 hours after tornadoes touched down right in the middle of Tennessee and just leveled entire communities. At least 24 people were killed. The National Guard's being deployed to help search for folks who might be buried in the devastation. In Putnam County, that's east of Nashville, uh, that area suffered the, the most deaths. They've got, uh, they're trying to find 38 people who are unaccounted for at this point. In the midst of the destruction in Nashville, folks were helping each other by offering a, a free meal to victims and a bit of hope. Come down and get a drink, a hot dog, you know, something to eat and, you know, stay warm. It just make you happy giving back to people that need it. You know, if it was me, I would hope somebody would help me the same way. President Trump says he's planning to go there and uh, witness this firsthand on Friday. Our Roseanne Aragon is also in Tennessee uh, with our live reports uh, coming up this morning at 6 o'clock. In the novel Coronavirus Crisis, the death toll here in the U.S. has now gone up. Three more people have died, bringing that total now to nine. All of those victims are in Washington state. Officials in Seattle say they're now looking to buy a local hospital to house the sick people, which is an indication that officials do expect more confirmed cases. Meantime, President Trump is donating his quarterly salary to efforts to stop this outbreak. That money is going to go to the Department of Health and Human Services. Time right now is 448. One of golf's greatest is now among the finalists for the 2021 World Golf Hall of Fame. Tiger Woods was named along with nine others. Woods turned professional back in 1996 at the age of 20. The 15-time major golf champ is among four nominees in the male category. The Golf Hall of Fame says the 2021 induction ceremony date, location, and class members will be announced in the coming weeks. You couldn't have a golf hall of anything. That's, I'm, I'm surprised like he's Tiger not Woods. already I kind nominated. of thought he already was. You know what? I'm going to just go out on a limb here. <laughs> it's going to work out. Probably yeah. going to get in. I'm pretty sure he'll make it, yes. I mean, just a he's, he's been retired five minutes. Just a little hunch. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. five minutes. They're like, come on in, Tiger. You're in. Okay. 448 here. You saw that uh, that camera shot. That's what uh, Mila would look at and go, ugh. Right? <laughs> I, I, I think ugh. that's how we all feel. It's not just Mila. Uh, so it's a really kind of gross start to the day. We do have wet roads. We have fog across the area. So unfortunately, I think Justin's going to be a little busy. But it's all up to you guys. Drive smart out there. So there's a live look from our uh, Kaplan Sinus relief camera. Now this is an elevated camera so you're actually on top of a building looking at a light right up in the cloud deck. We do have patchy fog across Harris County. It is extremely thick once you work your way closer to the coast. Right now at the airport in Galveston you're getting about a mile mile and a half. Once you actually get to seawall it drops dramatically lower than that. It is going to be a very soupy start to the day and then we have the showers on top of it. Here's a look at exact track radar. Right now some light drizzle light rain but we have more on the Way and those thunderstorms are going to be moving in between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So if you have a later drop off for your kids, maybe a Mother's Day out program, you want to make sure that you're watching those road conditions as you head on out. An 80% chance of those widely scattered thunderstorms as we go into the evening commute, I'm going to drop our rain chances and it's going to be warm today. We'll keep our temperatures generally in the 70s. There's a wide scope at the storm system itself. So a big spin of low pressure still in West Texas. So you can tell it's going to take the entire day to completely work its way through, but there's a very small window where we could see some stronger thunderstorms. So I want to highlight that so you know when you have to really be on top of it. Morning drive, just light rain, fog, wet roads. It's going to be inconvenient. The time frame where we could see those strong to severe storms is 10 a.m. to about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You can see that line of thunderstorms pushing in from the northwest. It kind of falls apart as it works its way through, but there's still a possibility about a 5% chance that a few of those thunderstorms storms could turn severe, producing hail or gusty winds. Again, about a 5% chance. The majority of us between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. will experience a few downpours, thunder, and lightning. As we go into the evening commute, a drier scenario. It's not looking as bad as we get past about 3 o'clock.
o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon. Here's a full look at that 10 day forecast. Cooler, beautiful sunshine for the end of the work week. The weekend looks spectacular. Just don't forget to spring forward. Over to you, Justin. Thank you very much, Ms. Britta. Appreciate that. Uh, interestingly enough, Britta was talking about the dense fog down on the island. Here's what it looks like at the Gulf Freeway at Tiki. So it's not that far inland. It's literally just at the seawall and maybe a couple of streets in. That's about all we've seen so far. I want to show you also what's been happening. This was that house fire, that incredible video we showed you a few minutes ago. That's where the police presence is, just to the uh, south of Beltway 8 at TC Jester. There's been a little bit of a slow up. Basically, folks are trying to figure out what that is and what's happening as they're watching out there. And this is what it looks like out at the uh, West Loop at Katy Freeway. Are seeing some fog out there as well. So certainly give yourself a little bit of extra time. That's where that uh, fire is. You notice between uh, 249 as it works its way towards Beltway 8. But the fog's the real story. Everybody in the green so far. That's the good news. But still, make sure that you give yourself just a little bit of extra time. Make sure you have the low beams on as well uh, if you don't turn those on or if they don't work automatically on your car. New Waverly, some light rain moving from there towards Shepherd on the East Tex. Everybody else, the roads are wet. They're not too bad, but still, just get, take it easy out there because uh, we could see some more showers start to move in, as Britta mentioned, especially as we get towards the lunchtime hour. Right now, we're looking pretty good. 25 minutes in from the woodlands. It's about 19 if you're coming in from Clear Lake, 25 from Sugarland, And for all of our east siders, my east sider peoples, we're looking at about 16 minutes if you're coming in from Baytown, guys. All right there, you just heard a bit of the band Midland last night. The trio made their Rodeo Houston debut. More than 56,000 people cheering them on at NRG for opening night. The stadium, though, is expected to be packed once again tonight when country music legend Willie Nelson will take that rotating stage. That's going to happen at about 8.45 this evening. Well, it's mutton busting time. Oh, yes. Here we go. This is uh, Brentley Hardinger. From Tarkenton, Prairie, the big winner last night. Uh, here's what he had to say after the ride. So tell us how you were able to stay on that sheep for so long. I dig my feet in and I hold on top. That is the way to do it. That's, oh, that's yeah. really how you do it. <laughs> Dad helped him practice. He wants to be a professional bronc rider when he grows up. These little guys, by the way, here are utterly adorable. Oh. We got more animal, cute animal stuff coming up on Channel 2, some river otter pups. And here's some more results from Super Tuesday. right now is 456. Here's your daily dose of cuteness. Miller Park Zoo in Illinois has welcomed two North American river otter pups. Check them out. The zoo says one male and one female were born on February 25th. This is really special because it's rare for North American river otters to reproduce in zoos and aquariums. 456, Brit is here. Yes, and we are tracking fog this morning, so please take it slow in addition to the fog if that wasn't enough. Yes, we have rain across the area. Those scattered showers right now are just creating some damp roads, but we have some stronger thunderstorms that are approaching the Austin area. I'll give you a look at that coming up in just a few minutes in our 5 o'clock hour and time it out so you can be prepared for when they are going to hit here in Houston. So we'll be back with more information in our 5 o'clock hour. Over to you guys. Okay, Britta, thanks. We continue to follow breaking news this morning out of Afghanistan. Still ahead at 5, the U.S. taking aim at Taliban fighters. What we're learning about some airstrikes that happened overnight. We've got all day coverage, too, coming up starting at 5. Comfortably. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Good morning. Super Tuesday is over. It's in the books. Uh, this morning, two campaigns are walking away in a definite lead. Uh, Democratic presidential candidates Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders got most of the delegates yesterday. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you all very much. Let's go on to the White House. Thank you. The winners and losers 
from uh, Super Tuesday. We'll have more as the morning goes on. But there was a bit of a slowdown on Super Tuesday. Those long lines had voters standing outside for hours. Look at them. Some people did not even vote until after midnight. We're going to hear from those who waited more than six hours to cast their ballots. The fog is back this morning. Uh, could be some showers, too, along the morning commute. We'll talk with Britta coming up about that and more. Good morning. Here we are on Wednesday now, 5 o'clock. I'm Owen Conflicty. Good morning. I'm Tania Wright. Justin is in with a check on the traffic. Yes, we got fog and wet roads. We got so fog. We got wet roads. Yeah, I'm going to show you one of the cameras over on the east side. We got a heavy truck stall at I-10 and Lockwood. Can't see where the stall is, but the camera will give you an idea. The roads are starting to get a little sloppy over there. So uh, it's light now, but as Britta has been mentioning, we might see a little action later on today. So just kind of keep your papers on yeah it. we're gonna go from sloppy to stormy there not not the trade-in you want to take the good news is it's gonna clear out for tomorrow so it's really a one-day event but you want to make sure that you're weather aware today for the morning drive it's all about the inconvenient conditions wet roads fog and then we'll deal with the storms later this morning so that's a live look at our tower camera it is just a sloppy mess on the southwest freeway we have the light rain the patchy fog but I want to show you exact track radar and show you what's going on uh, closer to San Antonio and Austin. So there's a line of thunderstorms along a cold front that's approaching 35 and eventually will move through southeast Texas. So we have time on our hands, which is great news. We're going to get through the morning commute pretty unscathed weather wise. It's just going to be inconvenient. So allow for that extra travel time. The storms that could produce that severe weather, that line that we're tracking approaching 35 is not going to move into our area until later this morning as we get closer to lunchtime. So what you see is what you get some light scattered showers. We have a dense fog advisory at the coast. That is up through 9 o'clock this morning. That's where we're seeing the lowest visibility directly along the coastline. Away from the coast, it's that light patchy fog, so just some slightly lower visibility. Our storm chances go up to 80% by 10 a.m. That's when that line of thunderstorms will be approaching from the west. I'll time it out coming up and talk about that slight chance of seeing some severe storms. Meanwhile, this evening's commute, not looking too bad, Justin. I'm going to drop our rain chances down to about 20%. We'll get you through that middle chunk of the day coming up. Over to you. Yeah, good. if the timing works out that way, that'll work out certainly for the afternoon, the evening commute. The folks won't necessarily have to deal with a lot of that mess. A uh, little bit of some slowdown. This is at North Beltway at TC Jester. This is where that house fire is. We'll show you that. If you didn't see the 430, we've got it coming up here. But folks are just kind of watching all the police presence there is just off to the side of that. So just kind of, you know, heads up on that. We're not seeing much of a slow on it so far, but I've got the fog turned on across the area, and you notice that that is basically dominating much of the forecast that we're seeing out there across much of the area. That fire is located. We're not seeing any slowdowns there, but if you happen to be driving that way, you see a bunch of flashing light. That's what's going on. We've got one accident on the board right now. That's over at East I-10 at 330 Decker at the spur there. It's backing things up, so if you're in Baytown, you take it out that way towards Lynchburg. Just watch out for that. Otherwise, drive time still in the green for just about everybody, guys. We're at 21 minutes coming in from Kingwood. But 290, the Northwesters coming in around 15 minutes. And right now from Katy, we're looking at about 22 minutes as well. As Brady mentioned, watch out for that fog because it's probably going to thicken up in some spots as well. All right, Stapleton, thanks. Decision 2020 here at 503. Former Vice President Biden leading the delegate count this morning after big wins on Super Tuesday. And Senator Bernie Sanders is banking on the one state that still has not called the vote. So here's where the candidates stand right now in the delegate count, according to NBC News. Biden currently in the lead with more than 400. Sanders is in second with just under 400. But again, that could all change as the votes in California come in. Channel 2 Sofia Ojeda has been tracking the results all morning, and as they were rolling in overnight. She joins us now live in our newsroom with the very latest. Sophia. Good morning. Super Tuesday was the night Joe Biden was looking for. The former vice president won nine states, pulling off some pretty big wins, including winning here in Texas and Massachusetts. But Senator Bernie Sanders had some big wins too, making this look more and more like it will be a two-man race. It's a good night. It's a good night. And it seems to be getting even better. The results rolled in across the country on Super Tuesday, and it ended with former VP Joe Biden having a huge night. He spoke shortly before polls closed in California, telling supporters that many had already declared his campaign dead. Just a few days ago, the press and the pundits had declared the campaign dead. And then came South Carolina, and they had something to say about it. And we're told, well, when you got to Super Tuesday, it'd be over. 
Well, it may be over for the other guy. Biden won nine states, including Texas, the second biggest prize of Super Tuesday with 228 delegates. Senator Bernie Sanders was declared the winner in Utah, Vermont, and Colorado. You cannot beat Trump with the same old, same old kind of politics. Not a good night for Mike Bloomberg, who spent half a billion dollars on ads. My message is simple. I am running to beat Donald Trump. And Elizabeth Warren lost big when she lost her home state of Massachusetts, now struggling to stay in the race. I was not born a politician, but I was born a fighter. Tulsi Gabbard is still running, and she's hoping she still has a chance. It's very much looking to be a, a brokered convention where there will be no settled nominee on the first ballot. And Joe Biden tweeting after those Texas results, retweeting NBC News results of the Texas win with a thank you, Texas. I need to uh, mention, like we said, Tulsi Gabbard still on the ballot, hoping to hang in as a long shot. We're still waiting on California's results. More than 400 delegates at stake there. Even though Biden and Sanders are both big winners this morning, the delegate count may not be known for several days or even weeks. Owen? Sophia, thank you. Uh, 506, a large turnout Super Tuesday resulted in some long lines of voting centers around the area. So this was Texas Southern University. Folks waited well into the early morning, seven hours after the polls closed. Through the long wait, folks we spoke with said they were determined to stay in line to make their voices heard. I looked at the line, I was thinking about I shouldn't even get in the line. But I said, now I complain a whole lot about what I see. I said, well, let me do something about it. <laughs> the long line seemed to be caused by uh, some voting machines, the number of them. Election officials would tell us at first they had eight, they brought in 14 more. I mean, and you still had such a long, long line. Lines. Uh, but some wondered if the long wait times were a form of voter discouragement. In a statement, the Texas Organizing Project, a group that mobilizes black and Latino voters, said in part, we're thrilled to see this historic turnout, but it's equally infuriating in our communities. Vote is being thwarted by long lines and malfunctioning machines. Coming up at 5.30, our Vincent Crivelli has a live report on exactly what the county clerk had to say about long lines at the polls. Turning now to the heated race in the 22nd Congressional District, Republican Congressman Pete Olson is retiring at the end of his term, and there were some well-known names running to replace him. Pierce Bush, who is the grandson of the late President George H.W. Bush, failed to make the cut in last night's race. Conservative activists Kathleen Wall and Fort Bend County Sheriff Troy Nels were the top vote-getters, and they are now heading to a runoff. Channel 2's Keith Garvin was at Nels' campaign watch party, where the sheriff vowed to win the runoff and take the election come November. A very confident and a very pleased Sheriff Troy Nails will be moving on to the runoff election in May for the Republicans. I'm overwhelmed with joy. A lot of joy at Sheriff Troy Nails' watch party in Richmond Tuesday night. The sheriff nailed down an impressive first place finish in the Republican primary for Congressional District 29. Nails credits the big victory to not just name recognition, but results he says he's produced as Fort Bend County Sheriff since 2012. He says voters on the campaign trail took notice. I said I would be honored, truly honored to represent you in Washington. I said I would appreciate your support. And they said you've done a great job as sheriff. There's no reason why you wouldn't do anything like, you know, you're going to go off to Washington and you're going to be just as effective as you were as sheriff. Nails told his crowd of supporters he not only was not worried about winning the May runoff, but he predicted he would beat the Democratic candidate in November by double digits. He believes there's no danger in District 22 turning blue in 2020. You're going to be quite surprised how many people in November are going to vote for Troy Nails uh, in this congressional district. That may be more of the moderate Democrats. They support Troy Nails. They always have and they always will. The runoff between Sheriff Nels and Wall will be on May 26, and one of those will be going up against a Democratic nominee, Shri Preston Kulkarni, who won 53% of the vote for District 22. He says that inclusion is what helped him win last night. We have the most diverse district in the entire country. We've run the most diverse, most inclusive campaign in the entire country. We ran in 21 languages, pulling in young people, women who never voted, and immigrants in particular. That, that's, that's how you win a district like this. Kulkarni ran a nearly successful campaign back in 2018 against outgoing Congressman Pete Olson, losing by only five points in that election. We've got much more election coverage at our website at click2houston.com. You can head there and see the updated numbers and get the key takeaways from yesterday's races.
Coming up on 510 on this Wednesday, some breaking news out of North Harris County this morning where a home is just in shambles after a massive fire sparked overnight. This happened at about 1.30 this morning along the North Bellway near TC Jester. Firefighters from three different departments came in to battle those intense flames. It was so strong, part of the two-story home collapsed. As of right now, there's no word on what started that fire or if the home was vacant at the time. Uh, breaking news from Afghanistan. The U.S. has conducted airstrikes against Taliban fire fighters accused of attacking Afghan forces. The strike comes hours after a phone call between President Trump and a Taliban chief negotiator, Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar. And there, now there are reports the Taliban has resumed violence days after the two agreed to uh, a peace agreement on Monday. Well, at least 24 people are dead and tens of thousands are in the dark after yesterday's tornadoes in Nashville. Still ahead at 5, we're going to have a look at the destruction from what officials are calling the deadliest tornado day in seven years. And this morning, we are waking up to fog here in Houston, so allow yourself that extra time out the door. It's a little light and patchy here in town, but directly at the coast, it does get very thick, where we have a dense fog advisory in effect. Meanwhile, we have scattered showers across the area, but more is on the way. A line of thunderstorms. I'll time everything out and let you know the threats coming up. We're back at 512 with an update to the devastating tornadoes that touched down Tuesday in Nashville. We know right now that at least 24 people were killed during that powerful storm and crews now searching for possible people who are still buried in the rubble there. Preliminary estimates from the National Weather Service suggest that at least one of those twisters was an EF3 or stronger with winds of up to 160 miles per hour. That twister tore through neighborhoods, businesses and schools. It's heartbreaking. It's incredible. Um, our prayers are greatly needed for families uh, out there who are dealing with uh, a sudden tragic event that has occurred in our state. Now at last check, at least 38 people there are still unaccounted for. Well, this morning we are tracking the very latest information on the coronavirus. We've got the newest numbers on the death toll here in the United States and what the mayor of Austin is saying about the virus's potential impact on South by Southwest. It's 514. Good morning time right now is 516 on this Wednesday live look outside you can see fog out there the roads are wet Britta will have your full forecast coming up in just a few moments and we are bringing you election results all morning long and of course remember we have the election results scrolling along the bottom of your screen for this entire newscast turning now to the race for the U.S. Representative District 2 seat Republican Congressman Dan Crenshaw is the incumbent and ran unopposed for the GOP primary for the Democrats though Lawyer and former advisor to Beto O'Rourke, Seema Lajavardian, and former teacher Elisa Cardell are now heading to a runoff in May. Now to the latest in the novel coronavirus and its spread in the United States. Three more people have died. That brings the death toll from the virus to nine. President Trump visited the National Institutes of Health to discuss the outbreak. They took him on a tour around the Vaccine Research Center. The president also donated part of his salary to the Department of Health and Human Services to help fund research. In Texas, fears about the novel coronavirus have sparked a call to cancel South by Southwest, set to start next Friday. Here's what the mayor of Austin had to say about it. I recognize that South by Southwest is a, is a big activity, but that can't be uh, the basis for the decision that we make. Uh, this decision has to be driven by the public health and safety of the community. There are no cases of coronavirus in Austin. Uh, the festival is scheduled to go on as normal as of right now. A petition to cancel South by Southwest does have more than 30,000 signatures. The legal counsel, counsel for Dr. Larry Nassar went before a Michigan appeals court to argue that the sentencing in his six sexual assault convictions. Nassar's attorney argued that the judge should not have heard his resentencing hearing, claiming that that judge showed bias by posting on social media prior to the hearing. But the judges who heard the appeal said Nassar was sentenced according to the plea agreement. 
518, here's a look at what's happening today at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Yeah, the gates open bright and early at 8 o'clock this morning, and it's Armed Forces Appreciation Day. So that means all active service members in uniform, as well as their spouses and children, get in for free to NRG Park. All visitors are being asked to wear red, white, and blue to show their support for our troops. Things get started this morning with the Open Cattle Show at 8. The, Grand, the Champion Wine Garden opens at 4 o'clock. And then at 6.45, the rodeo kicks off with round two of the Super Series, followed by, in concert tonight, the one and only Willie Nelson, his ninth rodeo appearance. First time gracing the stage was back in 1985. So you want to catch Willie tonight, there are still tickets available. Time right now is 5.19 on a Wednesday. Let's go to Britta now with a check on our forecast. And Britta, it's drizzly, it's foggy, it's not the best day. Yeah, kind of a yucky start to the day. The good news is we're going to get through the majority of our morning commute unscathed. We're just going to have the inconvenient weather conditions, the nasty stuff. That's going to hold off until later this morning. And you want to make sure that you're checking Frank's free weather app if you're heading out for lunch plans or for after school pickup. That's sort of towards the tail end of the time frame, but we could still see some scattered thunderstorms across the area. This morning, it's all about the patchy fog, the light rainfall, the damp roads. You definitely don't want to run behind. Make sure that you're driving appropriately. We have some light patchy fog here in town. It just does get a little thicker as you get directly along the coastline and we have a dense fog advisory in effect for our coastal counties until 9 o'clock. The rainfall doesn't look too impressive. A lot of it's that light mist and drizzle, the constant light rainfall. That's what we're anticipating between now and about 9 o'clock in the morning. Then after that point, we'll watch some storms that are currently approaching the Austin area moving into southeast Texas. So you'll notice that our rain chances go up dramatically. By 10 a.m., we're up to 80 percent, but the evening commute, a slow dry out, will have less rain to deal with. Here's a wide scope of what's going on. We have the cold front that's getting closer to the 35 corridor and then that big spin of low pressure that's not going to cross over southeast Texas until later tonight so we're not completely dry until we get to later tonight. Meanwhile this morning we're just tracking those scattered showers light rain fog wet roads take it slow out there temperature wise we're sitting around 70 degrees so it's not too chilly we're going to keep it in the 70s for today. I want to pause the clock at 11 a.m. That's when that line of thunderstorms is moving into our northwest counties. It does start to fall apart but holds together just enough that we're going to see some isolated downpours, thunder and lightning, and there is that slight chance that we could see some small hail or gusty winds. Notice that is a line of thunderstorms. So again, it's not going to rain the entire day, but during that time frame of 10 a.m. to about 2 p.m., you want to make sure that you're weather aware. By the p.m. drive, we start to dry things out. Temperatures in the 60s. The evening commute is not going to be too bad, but then later tonight, we still have that upper level low, so I'll keep in a slight chance of rain even through the uh, evening forecast. We don't dry out until about midnight tonight. From 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., again, those isolated storms can produce the gusty winds and small hail. It's about a 5% chance of severe weather today, so most of us will just deal with thunderstorms moving through, through the middle part of the day. Justin, look at that. Thursday and Friday, sunny skies, cooler temperatures, and beautiful weather all the way through the weekend. I'm going to pay you for that soon. Ooh, I'll take it. That is a good looking forecast. Not so much today, though, so far. This is what we're dealing with, as Britt has been talking about the fog. This is a live look at 288 at Alameda Genoa. Going northbound there, definitely make sure you've got the low beams on because that fog is pretty thick on the south side. Not only there, but if we go over towards Hillcroft, this is the southwest freeway. It's not as bad, but notice there's a little bit of wet on the road, so just give it a few extra minutes, as I've been mentioning. It's definitely good to just put, I budget in an extra 10, 15 minutes. You'll be fine after that. West Loop at Post Oak, everybody's flowing so far. So good. Nice to see that. The problem is the main veins here, basically, I-10 and I-45, the north and south and Gulf Freeway, it's all about a half a mile to a mile visibility, and that's pretty much area-wide. We don't have any big slows, and in fact, that uh, one crash that we were talking about as well did clear. That was over towards uh, Baytown, and then, of course, we've got that fire up on the north side near T.C. Jester at uh, Beltway 8. That is off there as well. We're not seeing any slows for but if you happen to see some police presence, if you go that way, that's what's happening. 11 minutes coming in right now from the south side of Pearland, 25 from the Woodlands, 17 from Baytown. Town, and it's about 25 guys if you're rolling in from Sugarland. Oh, you didn't say it. There's a little sheen on the on the roadways. <laughs> that video still kills me. All right, hey, he's the Knicks' biggest fan, the New York Knicks, but he's really not happy right now. He's really angry. Spike Lee, you know, he's usually sitting in front row, but now he says he's not going to any more games. We'll tell you why coming up. Haley's here. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Owen. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. A consistent bedtime may be what you need for long-term health. Coming up. Why sleeping at the same time every day is just as important as how much sleep you get.
Good morning. Time right now is 526. Now to the race for Harris County Precinct 2 Constable. The race is pretty interesting because nearly a dozen former high-level deputies sued Constable Christopher Diaz, claiming that they were forced to contribute and work on his re-election campaign. Another point of interest, there are two candidates with the same name, Jerry Garcia. The results, though, are showing a runoff between Jerry Garcia, who led that race with 39%, and Christopher Diaz trailing behind with 35. For U.S. Rep District 9, Democrat Congressman Al Green is the incumbent with 84% of his party's vote, while Johnny Teague led the Republican Party vote with 59%. But a surprising upset, upset in the race for Texas Railroad Commissioner. In the Republican primary, incumbent Commissioner Ryan Sitton conceded to challenger Jim Wright, who led that vote with 55%. The Democratic primary looks like it is now heading to a runoff in May with oil and gas attorney Attorney Krista Castaneda and former state rep Roberto Alonzo. Well, the Astros regular season starts in about three weeks from now, and Justin Verlander just made his first spring start. Now, he was on the mound in Florida yesterday. He, who, Verlander, who had a groin injury earlier in spring training, did not report any problems after throwing 53 pitches in two and two-thirds innings. He did have three hits, including a homer, and also struck out three. Now, they also had a starting role player who struck out three, four in three innings. The Astros take on the Marlins today at noon. It is a feud for the ages. A sports team and one of the biggest celebrity fans now going head to head. Spike Lee, a Knicks super fan, says he's not going to attend any more of his team's games this season after he was denied access to Madison Square Garden through the employee entrance. He says he has been using that entrance for 28 years, but when he went to go in for Monday's game, he was told he had to use another one, the VIP entrance, which was a few blocks away. After he spoke out about the incident, the Knicks released a statement calling the idea that Lee was a victim, quote, laughable. Well, Justin is in this morning tracking traffic all morning long, but you can track your commute online anytime. Just head to our traffic website to see what's driving Houston. There you can get up to the minute drive times as well as maps of your morning commute. That is all on clicktohouston.com slash traffic. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Things moving slowly on Super Tuesday. Voters stuck in long lines, some for as long as four hours. The explanation we're getting from election officials. Plus, the Democratic race is uh, looking like a showdown now between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. Take a look at how Biden's surge uh, has changed the race for the Democratic nomination. And the concerns over the coronavirus even affecting people at the polls, the issue that it caused coming up. Good morning, everyone. Coming up on 531 now on a Wednesday morning. That's I'm Tanaya Wright. So the 4th of March. Good morning. I'm Owen Plenty. Justin, how are we doing out there? Uh, pretty good so far. Fogged in issue. Some of the roads are wet. I've got a couple cameras. I'll show you that you just need to take it slow as you're headed out the door. You know, budget an extra 10 minutes or so. It ain't worth it. I'm just going to say, it ain't worth it. Yeah, no, slow it down. down. Slow it down because they're only going to get worse as we get that line coming in. You and I have been kind of watching it over near San Antonio. It's getting ugly. Yeah, it is getting ugly. So we have a line of thunderstorms that's approaching the 35 corridor, so between San Antonio and Austin. That's not going to arrive until after the morning commute. So at least we only have inconvenient driving conditions, but fog, light rain, that's enough to cause huge traffic issues here in Houston. And then we have to worry about the thunderstorms. So let's get you through your Wednesday. That's a live look at the Southwest Freeway. It's sloppy. We have damp road conditions, that light mist or drizzle, and then you throw in the fog. The thunderstorms that we're tracking are getting closer to the 35 corridor. They are tracking hail and gusty winds, and they have severe thunderstorm watches out for that area. The line is expected to fall apart just slightly as it moves into the Houston area, but it's going to hold together just enough to create those thunderstorms and that slight chance of seeing severe weather here in the metro area. The time frame, 10 a.m. to about 2 p.m., depending on how far west you live, because, of course, it's going to be moving in along I-10. That's when you see the 80% chance of thunderstorm activity. Temperatures staying in the 70s for the day. As we get into the evening, forecast will back those thunderstorm chances down, so the evening commute is going to feature some drier weather. On top of the light rain this morning, we do have fog. You're visibly down to three-quarters of a mile at the coast. That's where it's really very thick, and we have a dense fog advisory for our coastal counties until 9 o'clock this morning. I'll take a look at that line of thunderstorms that we're
that we're tracking getting closer to San Antonio and give you the exact timeline for when we're expecting it here in Houston coming up. Over to you. All right, thank you very much, Britta. We've got a couple of stalls out there that we're tracking right now. I've got one that's on the uh, Southwest Freeway. That's at uh, 1092 in Wilcrest. Uh, another heavy truck stall, I-10 East and Cedar. And this is kind of the bigger problem right now, as you're seeing. We've got a decent amount of fog out there. This is 288 at Almeida Genoa. Not only that, but we've also been looking at uh, some potential for some wet weather here. This is I-10 East at Lockwood. You can see the rain on the camera and a nice little sheen working its way across the I-10 as well. So just be careful out there. Give yourself a little bit of extra time, as I mentioned before. Northwest Freeway at Tidwell. Everybody's moving uh, nicely so far. Roads are a little slick, but they're not necessarily super wet at this point. The fog, I think, is the bigger issue of the two until, as Brady mentioned, those thunderstorms start to move on through. So I'll track where some of those slowdown spots are happening. Otherwise, everybody's still in the green. Nice to see that at 530. 22 coming in from Kingwood, 20 in from Clear Lake. And right now, if you're coming in on the 290 corridor from Cypress, it's going to take about 15 minutes, guys. All right, Stapleton, thank you. 5.33 now to Decision 2020. Former Vice President Joe Biden had a super Tuesday indeed. Senator Bernie Sanders wasn't too shabby either. Both guys have picked up a lot of pledged delegates. In a big night for Biden, he's projected to have won nine Super Tuesday states, including a surprise win in Texas. Bernie Sanders picked up his fair share of delegates and right now is in the lead in California where they had long lines and voter technology malfunctions that caused some delays. They're still counting the votes out there. So as of right now, with the NBC delegate count, Joe Biden, 439, Bernie Sanders, 346. Although that says 373 on the screen. So either way, you see they're, they're pledged at this point, and, uh, and they still need 1,991 to win the nomination. Biden is more confident now than ever that he'll win that nomination and promises to bring bipartisanship back to Washington. We can't have a never-ending war between the parties. We need a president who can fight, but may no, make no mistake about I can fight, but look, we need as badly, as badly, someone who can heal. Uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren is struggling at this point. She lost her, even her home state of Massachusetts to Joe Biden. Mike Bloomberg won American Samoa. That was it. He now says his campaign will reassess things. A large turnout last night uh, made the very long lines at voting centers across the Houston area. And covering that is our Vincent Crivelli, live this morning from the Harris County Clerk's Office. Vincent. Owen, good morning. Some lines were so long, voters had to wait past 1.30 this morning to cast their ballot. The problem, unprepared voting centers. Cheers, the front of the line finally in sight. Overnight, some voters waited six hours to cast their ballot at TSU and a few other voting centers across the county. The process painfully slow, but some voters stayed entertained. <laughs> this line stretched long. It took us two minutes and 11 seconds to go from the door to the back of the line. I looked at the line, I was thinking about I shouldn't even get in the line. But I said, now I complain a whole lot about what I see. I said, well, let me do something about it. TSU had eight voting machines, but the turnout was so high, election workers had to bring in 14 more. As an African-American woman, it is definitely important for me to be here and exercise my civic duty. An insult to injury, a software glitch caused the voting machines to temporarily shut down at midnight. The parties have to run the primaries, so they choose the locations, they choose the election workers. Um, we just administer the election. They use our machines and we tabulate the the results for them. And they choose the amount of machines or agree on the amount of machines? Well, they agree on it, but we also wanted to be fair and equitable and give both sides the same amount. Election officials added the new voting center system, which allows voters to cast their ballot at any voting center coupled with high turnout at unprepared centers, contributed to the delay. Now, despite the long lines, most voters at TSU stayed positive, saying they were happy to exercise their right to vote. Reporting live from the county clerk's office, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Vincent, thank you for that. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're not the only ones that were dealing with long lines, and I mentioned California, too. Out in Los Angeles, the county's overloaded new voting system is what caused the backup. In response, uh, Bernie Sanders asked for voting centers to stay open an extra two hours saying voters were being denied their constitutional right to vote. 
Election workers in 15 other California counties said they also had technical problems connecting to the statewide voter registration database. Meantime, the president had no problem getting the delegates on Super Tuesday. Out of all the delegates available, the president managed to secure all of them but one, the other going to former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld. Republican incumbent Senator John Cornyn won his state Senate primary, beating Dwayne Stovall with 76 percent. Meantime, Mary M.J. Hagar, a veteran, fell short of capturing the Democratic nomination. The former Air Force helicopter pilot earned 23 percent of the party's votes and will now head to a runoff on May 26, possibly with Royce West. Senator Cornyn spoke last night in Austin following his big win. Out in Austin, uh, voting was getting off to a slow start because election workers failed to show up. The Travis County Clerk's Office says multiple election judges and poll workers were no-shows on Super Tuesday. The office says fears of coronavirus may have kept people from appearing. Multiple polling places had wait times of 20 minutes or longer, according to the Clerk's Office. We've got more election coverage at click2houston.com. You can see the latest primary numbers there and check out the key takeaways from last night's races. Time right now is 5.38 on this Wednesday. A spokesperson for the International Olympic Committee has confirmed that the summer games will begin as planned despite the coronavirus fears. So far, the virus has been blamed for 12 deaths in Japan and has shut down most schools, sporting competitions, and even Olympic-related events in the country. The suggestion of a possible change of plan was quickly batted down at a meeting with Olympic officials. The, the conclusion from us is that the games are going ahead. The games will go ahead. We're confident they will go ahead. Uh, so all the rest is speculation. The games are set to begin on July 24th. Of course, you can watch them right here on Channel 2. Voting hours were extended in Tennessee last night after that string of tornadoes that ripped through the state, killing at least 24 people. The tornadoes hit in the middle of the night, waking people from their beds. And as the sun came up, it was clear to see the damage was everywhere. Preliminary estimates from the National Weather Service suggest at least one of the twisters was an EF3 or stronger. That's got winds up to 160 miles an hour. One of the tornadoes hit the heart of Nashville. Channel 2's Roseanne Aragon is there with a closer look at the damage. There are no words that can describe the devastation here in Nashville and the loss felt throughout the state. The rubble goes for miles. This behind me used to be an auto parts store. But amongst the destruction are helping hands who firmly believe this community will pull through. From one nightfall here... There was no stopping that. That was just came out of the sky. To another, a day after devastating tornadoes tore through Tennessee eastward. But the glimpse of utter chaos in central Tennessee doesn't reveal the state's biggest loss. At least 25 lives lost too soon. The death toll rising. There are folks uh, missing. We're, we have deployed teams across the state in a search and ref, ref, uh, rescue effort. Darkness is here with tens of thousands of people without power. But near this now unfamiliar O'Reilly Auto Parts, the rubbled parking lot, and this empty Kroger in Germantown, you can hear... Free food here! Free food here! Free hot dogs! The sound of hope through people. Just come down to get a drink, a hot dog, you know, something to eat and, you know, stay warm. Hot meals filling stomachs. And it just make you happy giving back to people that need it, you know. If it was me, I would hope somebody would help me the same way. And filling hearts, showing where there is darkness, there is light. Be a blessing back. That's the only payment this food truck owner was asking for is taking kindness and paying it forward. And that's a lesson we could all learn. In Nashville, Roseanne Aragon, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Wow, thank you, Ro. We're going to hear from her live from Tennessee coming up in our 6 o'clock hour. But turning now to our local weather, Britta, it's uh, drizzly and foggy this morning. Yeah, not really the best morning. Believe it or not, this is Galveston. You can't see anything. It is extremely thick along seawalls, so give yourself that extra time. We have a dense fog advisory at the coast until 9 o'clock this morning. In addition to fog, we have light rain, scattered showers. It's going to be a messy morning commute. Oh, I think we saw some taillights out there. You just need to make sure that you're using your low beams and driving slow. Meanwhile, we have a line of storms that we're tracking. It's about to hit the 35 quarter between San Antonio and Austin. The time frame for the metro area, 10 a.m. to about 2 p.m. And then drier weather is going to move in just in time for the evening commute. We'll take a look at what we're expecting with those thunderstorms pushing in from the west coming up next. Over to you.
I uh, thank you very much, Bertie. Yeah, I was mentioned that's going to be the big issue for us here. So I want to show you something. What we've got this is a house fire cleanup from earlier this morning. It's at uh, Beltway 8 and TC Jester, just off of that. And it did not showing any kind of slow so far, but I want to give you a live look at what it looks like. If you happen to drive past there, I'm going to step out of the way. A uh, little bit of a police presence. Everybody's moving okay, but they're sort of over in this area here. So if you see some of those flashing lights, if this is your commute, that's what's happening. Elsewhere, though, the fog is really starting to thicken up in spots. Just out outside of the uh, Beltway 8 and Jersey Village area right around 290. We've got one stall. Another one as you go towards I-10 connecting in with the West Loop and then an accident northbound working its way up towards the Beltway either way. Most of those are not showing any slows with them. They just happen to be out there. So certainly make sure you give yourself a little bit of extra time. Everybody's still clean and green looking good. 17 in from Baytown, 21 from Clear Lake. And if you're coming in from the Woodlands right now, guys, it's going to take you about 27 minutes. Well, after the Pope canceled a traditional spiritual retreat, some are wondering about his health, especially in Italy, where the coronavirus numbers continue to rise. Yeah, ahead we'll get official word from the Vatican on Pope Francis. It's 543 right now. 102 at 10. All right, we're back now at 545. So uh, let's turn to the race for Harris County District Attorney. Incumbent Kim Og defeated her challengers, earning 55% of the votes. GOP prosecutor Mary Nan Huffman widely beat out two contenders, Lloyd Wayne, uh, Lloyd Wayne Oliver, that is, and Lori D'Angelo for her party's ticket in the race. For Harris County attorney, it appears Christian Deshaun Menifee and incumbent Vince Ryan are headed to a runoff. Whoever wins will face John Nation, the lone Republican candidate, in November. Well, the Vatican now says Pope Francis only has a cold and isn't showing signs or symptoms of any other illnesses. That's right. The statement followed a report that an Italian newspaper that said the Pope had tested negative for coronavirus. Pope Francis announced on Sunday that the cold was forcing him to skip a week-long spiritual retreat with senior Vatican officials. Italy is now battling an outbreak of the coronavirus. As of right now, 79 people have died there. Well, we are now less than six months away from the Tokyo Olympic Games. Coming up, we'll get a sneak peek at how Springs' own Simone Biles is getting ready. And I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. One learning disability might be linked to your race or financial status. Up next, the family's facing ADHD more than others. Time now, 546. Medical Services. We're back. It's 548. The Summer Olympic Games right around the corner. And now athletes from USA Gymnastics, including Houstonian Simone Biles, are getting ready for the Games while working through a massive scandal that hit sports last year. NBC's Stephanie Goss sat down with Biles amid reports that USA Gymnastics proposed a settlement plan to the survivors of the sexual assault cases against former team doctor Larry Nasser. Biles says she's grown personally since competing in the 2016 Olympics. When you look back at the athlete you were back in Rio and who mm -hmm. you are today, what would you say is the biggest change in you? I would say my maturity, um, because going in, you're a rookie, now I'm a veteran. I know a lot more, I've been through a lot more, I've experienced a lot more, so I think that helps and has made me to the person I am today. You can catch that full interview coming up later this morning on the Today Show. Well, there's a new surprising study linking breastfeeding to childhood allergies. Also, good sleep habits may reduce the risk of heart disease and help with weight loss. Haley's here with more of our health headlines. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. So that latest study coming from Columbia University research showed people who slept seven to eight hours a night and met healthy heart guidelines were 61 percent less likely to develop heart disease than those who slept for shorter or longer periods of time. Scientists also found women who went to bed at the same same time every day lost more body fat than those with fluctuating bedtimes no matter how long they slept. A new study links exclusive breastfeeding to a lower risk of childhood allergies and asthma. Researchers tracked nearly 1,200 mother-infant pairs for six years. Babies who were only breastfed for three months were 23% less likely to develop respiratory allergies. They also had a 34% reduced risk of asthma, but only if they had no family history. There's new data on learning disability rates. In a study led by CDC researchers, nearly 14% of children in the U.S. were diagnosed with ADHD or a learning disability in 2018. Black children were more likely to be diagnosed than their white or Hispanic peers 
Income was another important risk factor. Children living in families below the federal poverty level had higher rates of ADHD or a learning disability regardless of race. And exercise is the answer to eliminating a lot of health complications, except where you exercise may be hurting your hearing. Doctors take a look at group exercise classes with music blaring and find some are louder than a healthy volume range, meaning it could damage your hearing. Coming up at 640, I'll tell you just how long it takes being in that noisy environment before you hurt your ears. Well, a lot of people like it because it kind of drowns out the fact that you're exercising. It yeah, takes your mind it takes off it. your focus <laughs> away from it. And I get it. And doctors always say, mm -hmm. you know what? exercise over anything else you know always prioritize your exercise but maybe just crank down the volume there's a, a, a trade-off i'm not going to exercise and protect my hearing exactly <laughs> uh, britta's here at 551 <laughs> with a kind of a sloppy morning out there how are it we doing it is a sloppy morning uh, so we're tracking fog some light rainfall it's an inconvenient start to your wednesday so do not run behind on time you're at 70 degrees at bush airport upper 60s in katy so it's a pretty mild start we're going to keep our temperatures in the 70s for the day here's a look at exact track radar the rain that we're dealing with right now is very light but it's out there all of our roads are damp this is what is coming in our direction a Line of thunderstorms from San Antonio up towards Austin. They have reports of hail and gusty winds. The line itself is moving in our direction and we're anticipating it to move through the metro area between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. It just depends on how far you live out to the west because of course it's going to push into our west counties first. So a little bit of an estimate on time. We're expecting it to get closer to Conroe around 11 o'clock in the morning and then closer to the east side of Houston by the time we get to lunchtime. Ahead of it we do have fog. Uh, you're visibly in town, light and patchy. You're down to a mile. As you get closer to the coast, it really starts to tank, and we do have a dense fog advisory at the coast until 9 o'clock. An 80% chance of storms as we get closer to 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. That's because that line that is moving into Austin and San Antonio, it's going to be moving through the metro area. As we get into the evening forecast, we will drop those storm chances. It looks like we'll have improved weather conditions, maybe just a few light rain showers for the evening drive. Take a look at that huge spin of low pressure in West Texas. That still has to cross over us as well, so we still have the the whole day to get through. The good news is it's just one day. As we go into Thursday and Friday, we're looking great. Again, for the morning drive, expect inconvenient driving conditions. It's going to be foggy, some light rainfall. Between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., we're tracking that line of storms moving in from the west. Those thunderstorms have a 5% chance of producing hail and gusty winds. After 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, some drier air moves in, and it looks like we'll have more quiet weather for the evening drive, and we can get ready to bring on the rodeo. There's a look at Thursday, Friday, and the weekend beautiful weather heading in our way not too bad so we got about 24 hours got to get through the uh muck and the mire of this we will certainly do that thank you very much Britta. time saver traffic looking good so far so south loop at i-45 notice that it is a little foggy out there but so far everybody's moving fairly smoothly that's why it's nice to see and then as we get up towards the uh, north side this is a north freeway at i-10 not too bad either we had a stall about an hour ago that has cleared and in fact i'm not seeing a whole lot out there a couple of stalls this is freeway over at uh, chimney rock and that is okay as well. Although notice that we've got some up near Jersey Village. We've got another one there with uh, I-10 where the West Loop meet up. And that's about it. Otherwise, we've been seeing some light showers up near New Waverly over towards Shepherd if you're on the East Tex. And then also starting to see a little bit of uh, pickup there as you work your way right towards the I-10 corridor on the uh, south, or excuse me, the Gulf Freeway, that is. Drive times right now still looking pretty good, guys. We've got 28 minutes in from the Woodlands, 26 from Sugarland, and 18 if you're coming in from Baytown. Like to see that, Justin. Well, a lot of people have questions about the spread of the coronavirus, and now we want to hear from you. Our health reporter, Haley Hernandez, is going to sit down with the health department for a Facebook Live coming up later this morning. You can join in and ask your questions coming up. And coming up at 6, we will continue our coverage of the coronavirus crisis. Good morning. Trending just before 6, a thief in Australia made the catch of a day using a fishing rod. Police say the man used that rod to steal a Versace necklace. Officers say the thief swiped that necklace off a mannequin at a high-end store in Australia last week. Now police did post this video on its Twitter page, hoping that this will lead to an arrest. One way to really make a bride angry on her <laughs> wedding day, you bring a llama to the wedding. That's just what the brother of one bride did in Ohio. At least he's dressed up. The gang started five years ago when the two were riding in the car with some friends. His sister was talking about wedding planning so much. He told her, if you make me go to your wedding, I'm bringing a llama. And, uh, well, this guy keeps his promises. Live from KPRC.
This is Channel 2 News Today. All right, following up on Super Tuesday. It's over now. The race for the White House is getting a little clearer. The two Democrats now with huge leads as they set their sights on each other. But we are not only taking on the corporate establishment, we're taking on the political establishment. So get back up and take back this country. And what's next for Decision 2020? Also this morning, the horrific aftermath of a tornado ripping across the Nashville area. We are live this morning in Tennessee as the death toll continues to rise as the search for survivors continues. Channel 2 weather, warm start to the day, but hold on to those umbrellas because uh, the rain is about to be rolling in. We'll hear from Britta here in just a second. We're getting close to 6 o'clock now on this Wednesday morning. I'm Owen Conflenti. Good morning. I'm Tanaya Wright. Justin is in with a check on the traffic, and it's foggy. It's mm -hmm. drizzly. Not yep. the best mixture. No, if you got to get on the road again, you got to watch out for it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on, guys, pick it up here. Anyway, thank you. Somebody got it. Anyway, <laughs> got it in the back. Yeah, we we got, got, it. got some fog. We've got some issues out there as well. So we'll get into all those in a sec. But obviously, it's that line of thunderstorms. That's what we're watching. As well. Yes, and it's just now hitting the 35 quarter. So we have a couple hours to watch it. As it moves into our area, we do have that slight chance of seeing some severe weather. Most of us will just have rumbles of thunder and a few downpours. Thankfully, this morning, that's not in the mix. But we have enough to deal with. We have fog, light rain. That is enough to slow down the morning drive. So be on top of it. That's a live look at the Southwest Freeway, which is a soggy mess. On Exact Track Radar, it doesn't look overly impressive. It is that light rain and light drizzle. Meanwhile, out to the west is when we have those thunderstorms. That's approaching San Antonio and Austin. We do have severe thunderstorm watches in those areas, and they have reports small hail and gusty winds, and that is a chance as the line moves into the metro area. The timeline, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The farther you live west of Interstate 45, the earlier you're going to see the onset. As we we go into the evening forecast, that's when we start to dry out. We'll have more information on the storms that we're expecting and also talk about the fog that we're waking up to coming up next. Justin, over to you. Thank you very much, Britta. Yeah, the fog's going to be a big issue this morning so far. This is a live look at the South Loop at I-45, and you can see just how that fog is impacting things. Uh, we've got about visibilities, as you mentioned, about a mile to a half mile in some areas as well. Looks a little better on the South Freeway. This is a Beltway 8 looking northward, so just south of KPRC2. The studio is here at South Guest. Not only that, but the Katy Freeway Fry Road looks pretty good as well. Most of your drive times still in the green, guys. I'll have those coming up for you in just a minute. All right, my friends, 601. Well, Super Tuesday's over. The field's looking a lot clearer for the Democrats battling for the White House. Here's a look right now at the Super Tuesday states. Former Vice President Joe Biden sweeping the southern states up for grabs, including Texas. Bernie Sanders won the West and part of the Northeast. California, though, still not called, but Sanders has the lead right now. President Trump sweeps the primary, 94% of the vote going to him, paving the way for the general election against whoever earns the Democratic nomination. Our Sophia Ojeda's in the studio with us this morning. Break it down how the primaries played out. Good morning. Good morning. Former Vice President Joe Biden, the big winner this Super Tuesday. He is leading the delegate count this morning, winning the state of Texas and nine others. He tweeted right after those Texas results, call it a W. Thank you, Texas, with a Whataburger logo changed to what a Biden. But final results still not in from the biggest state, California. That, of course, could change everything. They don't call Super Tuesday for nothing. A big win for former VP Joe Biden after many of his former opponents rallied around him early this week. Beto O'Rourke sitting down with Biden at a Dallas Whataburger after his endorsement for the former VP. Biden won nine states last night, including Texas, the second biggest prize of Super Tuesday with 228 delegates. And we're told well when he got to Super Tuesday, it'd be over. Well, it may be over for the other guy. Senator Bernie Sanders, now leading in California, also declared the winner in Utah, Vermont, and Colorado. I tell you with absolute confidence, we are going to win the Democratic nomination. Tough night for former mayor Mike Bloomberg, picking up four delegates in American Samoa. No matter how many delegates we win tonight, we have done something no one else thought was possible. Senator Elizabeth Warren losing in her home state of Massachusetts, but wouldn't throw in the towel just yet. It is an awesome thing. You are going to do it right here in Michigan next week. And Representative Hello. Tulsi Gabbard not giving up either. You know, everywhere we go, we're continuing to draw large numbers of people who are really hungry for the truth. For 
President Trump tweeting throughout the night, calling Mike Bloomberg the biggest loser. He tweeted in part, quote, $700 million washed down the drain, and he got nothing for it. So we're still waiting on California's results. More than 400 delegates at stake there. The delegate count, though, may not be known for several days or even weeks. Of course, we'll keep you posted. Tanaya? Yes, we will. Well, one of the big races that we have been keeping a close eye on here at home is the second congressional district. Representative Dan Crenshaw holds that seat right now, but his challengers, they still need to be hashed out. Seema Lajverdian and Elisa Cardell are headed now to a runoff on the Democratic side. If you would like more on Super Tuesday results and Decision 2020, make sure you stay with us on air and online at clicktohouston.com politics. Well, we do have some breaking news this morning. A massive fire destroys a home overnight in North Harris County. Now investigators are trying to figure out whether this home was vacant or not. Firefighters got the call at about 1.30 this morning at that home on the North Beltway right near TC Jester. Crews from three different fire departments came in to help battle those intense flames. It was so strong that part of that two-story home collapsed. The cause of that fire remains under investigation this morning. 604 now continuing to track the latest on the powerful tornado that hit Nashville. At least 24 people have died. Dozens more are still missing after a tornado that hit four counties uh, on the edge of Nashville. So this morning, our Roseanne Aragon is in Tennessee with, they've got a horrible second day of recovery ahead. Uh, Ro, good morning. Thanks for joining us. What's the story here this morning? Well, you can see behind me parts of this town locals can't even recognize. The damage here in Nashville is devastating. But amongst all of this destruction, there are people who are willing to do everything they can to help and make sure this community pulls through. The scars are still fresh and deep. And the devastation is um, heartbreaking. The physical damage overwhelming. A string of tornadoes tearing apart middle Tennessee. Entire neighborhoods left in ruins, crumbled schools, this private airport hangar unrecognizable. But the twisted metal, shattered glass, tossed vehicles, and splintered wood stretching for miles is not the most significant loss. It's the hard thing that I can see. I feel so sorry for the people that lose their lives over it. Two dozen died in the storms. Many more are still missing. Our prayers are greatly needed for families uh, out there who are dealing with uh, a sudden tragic event. An event that included at least one EF3 twister with winds of 160 miles an hour. Those who lived through it say they'll never forget the intensity of the storm. We headed for the bathroom and it sounded like an explosion just went off in the house and it just blowed all the windows out and blowed half the house away. One thing the winds couldn't rip away. In the worst of circumstances, the best of people comes out. The resolve of survivors here. And now the sun is up and you can see there is still a lot of work to be done here. Many people here say they are determined to rely on that strength and humanity to get them through. Reporting live from Nashville, Roseanne Aragon, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Ro, thank you. 607, as fears of coronavirus spread, so does a petition to cancel South by Southwest. It's got more than 30,000 signatures so far. The mayor of Austin says he's confident the city's protocol is working. He's not aware of anyone testing positive for the novel coronavirus in his neck of the woods. Also new this morning, Amazon says one of its Seattle employees has tested positive for coronavirus. That person apparently got sick on February 25th. They then went home and have not been back to work since. That news comes as the death toll in Seattle rises to nine with 29 people infected in Washington state. Some schools there are canceling classes today as well as health officials race to figure out how to handle the virus. Well, we have made it to Wednesday, so you know what that means. It's hump day, but we've also got a scholarship surprise. That's right. I took a trip down to Sam Rayburn High School, met an amazing student there. We get our senior scholarship winner ahead, Britta. Oh, always the best part of a Wednesday. Unfortunately, our Wednesday features fog, light rain, and storms that are pushing in. We'll give you the timeline and also give you the all-important rodeo forecast for tonight. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Nelson taking the stage tonight should be a good one. We've got a problem out on Highway 330 at Bayway West. This is a total closure, a major accident. I'm going to talk about where folks are going. And we'll take a look at your drive times along with a very foggy start to your morning commute. It's 6.08. Stick around. 
Sports Makers. Welcome back, everyone. Time Saver Track. I want to give you an update on that uh, situation out there at 3.30. Major accident. Unfortunately, that is a fatal accident as well. All lanes are closed. They are diverting folks off on the feeders. That is going to check things up if you're trying to get up towards I-10. If you're in around the Lynchburg area, Wooster as well, you can see they've got the whole highway shut down. That's the 3.30 highway. This is looking back east on Bayway. Everybody right now is being diverted to the feeders. They are moving, but it's certainly going to take a little bit of extra time as well. Quick look at your drive time forecast around the area. We're starting to see some slows in the typical spots. 15 minutes now coming in from Pearland, 28 from the Woodlands. We'll talk more about a couple of stalls and uh, take you around about with the uh, fog as well. Coming up in just a bit, guys. We are just thrilled to reveal our fifth scholarship winner for 2020 this morning. Yeah, and as you'll see, this week's surprise had a little bit of a trick and a lot of confetti going on, <laughs> too. Uh, our winner's ranked 10th in her class of about 600 uh, students. She's led, uh, uh, she's done a lot with theater as well. She's also quite athletic on the varsity volleyball team and serves her community. I was honored to deliver the check this week on behalf of us and Texas Mattress Makers. Well, here we are today at Sam Rayburn High School in the Pasadena ISD, where a group of students thinks they're about to surprise their principal. What they don't know is that we're here to surprise one of them. Let's go. All right. Here she is. Here's the principal. Oh, no. We do love Miss Reyes, of course. She's an amazing principal, but that's not why I'm here today. I'm here today with a big fat check uh, on behalf of Texas Mattress Makers and us at KPRC Channel 2 for uh, one of our senior scholarship winners. So without further ado, congratulations to your classmate, Daniela Hernandez. Tell me a little bit about the community work that you wrote about in your oh, essay. Um, so for two years in a row, me and my friends did a community project for uh, for a competition for DECA. We tried our best to fundraise for like different nonprofits. Yeah, I read you do some volleyball, you're oh, in the yeah. theater. I'm in the varsity volleyball team. And then also I'm a part of the theater uh, group. So that's fun to be with my friends and act. What about future plans for you? College, what are you gonna um, study? Do you have any idea? I want to go to University of Texas for environmental engineer. Our community is like really close to the refineries. And so like seeing it every day has affected me. And it kind of wanted me to kind of modify my community and make um, renewable resources more accessible to our community. Hey, one more round of applause for your classmate. How about it, guys? Yeah? I'm Daniela Hernandez. I'm a KPRC Texas Mattress Maker Scholarship winner. We definitely went through three rounds of confetti. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot done. of she confetti She was awesome. There. Uh, congratulations again to uh, Miss Daniela and everybody at Sam Rayburn High School. Uh, she's definitely motivated to do great things, so we can't wait to see what's in store. Definitely. Well, all students considered for the KPRC Texas Mattress Maker Scholarship have been nominated by their high schools. You can keep up with our winners throughout the semester by logging onto our website, clicktohouston.com slash scholarships. And we have five. We have 20 total students, so we'll have many more to come. Well, coming up, more from Super Tuesday, a breakdown on the presidential race from Washington and what's next for the field of Democrats. Time right now is 6.15. All morning long, we are following the results of Super Tuesday, but the big race on a lot of people's minds is the race for the White House. NBC's Tracy Potts is in Washington, D.C. this morning. So, Tracy, two Democrats really came out on top yesterday. Well, they did, and especially uh, Joe Biden, who some thought his campaign was on life support. Now he's won nine out of 14 states, including Texas. That was a bit of a surprise and a big one for him. Uh, but we are still waiting this morning on numbers from California, where Bernie Sanders is leading, but they're still counting the votes. Also, Maine, too close to call. Sanders picked up Colorado, Utah, and his home state of Vermont uh, next door in Massachusetts. Not a win for Elizabeth Warren at home, and so that raises questions about where her campaign may be headed. Michael Bloomberg, who was on the ballot for the first time, won one American territory, American Samoa, picked up four delegates there, but he says he's in it for the long haul. Tulsi Gabbard, yes, she is still on the ballot, um, saying that she's concerned that this may end up being a brokered convention with no one showing up this summer with enough delegates to actually clinch the nomination. This was a big day, but it's not the only day. Still a lot of voting to happen between now and the summer.
Yep, and still waiting for California. Thank you, Tracy. Turning now to the race for U.S. Rep, Rep District 22, Troy Nels is headed for a May 26 runoff with Kathleen Wall. They're battling for the seat vacated by Republican Representative Pete Olson. We caught up with Nels at his watch party, and he says he is ready to face whoever he needs to. I just want to tell you the first leg of the race is over, right? And now there's going to be a runoff. A runoff with who? Quite honestly, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. Once the Republican ticket is hashed out in May, they are going to have to face Shri Preston Kulkarni, who won the Democratic primary. He says it's been a battle gathering support in District 22. The first time around, nobody thought we had a chance here. This district is one of the most gerrymandered in the country. Two to one Republican. It was Tom Blaze's district. Pete Olson won by 35%. We got that to under five points, not without changing the lines. It's still gerrymandered, but we won it by getting more inclusive, bringing more people in, uniting communities. And so that model is not just for Fort Bend. We want it to be a model for the rest of Texas and the rest of the country. Now, the race to watch uh, as it heads to a runoff is this one. Uh, the Senate race out of Alabama involving former Attorney General Jeff Sessions. The longtime Republican leader was forced into a runoff. Let me say this. No one will prevail in this Senate race without being vetted. This is especially true of a tourist from Florida. <laughs> the preliminaries are over. Now we must know where our opponent stands on the key issues. Session, sessions will face former Auburn coach Tommy Tuberville, who actually narrowly beat him in votes yesterday. The runoff is being held at the end of the month. Whoever wins will compete against the Democratic Senator Doug Jones in November. Coming up on 619 on this Wednesday, getting you out the door this morning with Justin and Britta. There's a uh, drizzle and fog out there on the roads. We've got drizzle, we've got fog, and unfortunately we've got a fatal accident mm -hmm. over towards 3.30. That's at Bayway West. They've got, the, all lanes are shut down if you're trying to get up to I-10 for folks right around the Baytown area. If you take that to get up there, they're diverting everybody down to the feeders. I'm going to have more on that, but yeah, the fog's a big mm -hmm. issue for us this morning so far on the road. Yeah, just very inconvenient, slippery roads. You need to make sure that you're giving yourself that extra time out the door, and this is just the beginning. So we're tracking a line of thunderstorms. It's moving over Interstate 35 between San Antonio and Austin, and it's moving our direction. So let's get you out the door. Uh, this is what you have to worry, uh, worry about for the morning drive, just really messy conditions. Sloppy roads, patchy fog. That's a live look at the Southwest Freeway. It is not the morning that you want to run behind on your timeline. Here's a look at exact track radar. It doesn't look overly impressive because the majority of it is that fine mist or drizzle. The storms themselves still well off to the west. They're just approaching the Austin area, but they are triggering severe thunderstorm watches. We have reports of gusty winds and also hail. That is possible as this line of storms moves into our area. Ahead of it, we have the fog. Visibility between a mile and a mile and a half, but a few spots getting very thick. We're down to a quarter of a mile at Bush. Directly at the coast is another spot, and we do have a dense fog advisory for our coastal counties until 9 o'clock this morning. After 9 o'clock, the focus goes to those thunderstorms pushing in from the west. The timeline, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., moving from west to to east. An 80% chance of widely scattered downpours. Temperatures are going to be remaining in the 70s for today. So again, it's going to be really mild out there. There's a wide scope of the storm system, the front moving its way. And then behind that, we still have that upper level low. That's not going to move through until later tonight. So again, this is going to be a whole day event. But once we get past today, really beautiful weather for Thursday and Friday. For the morning commute, again, just light rainfall, foggy conditions from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We have that line of thunderstorms moving through. Those thunderstorms have about a 5% chance of producing hail and gusty winds. So again, the majority of us will just deal with a rumble of thunder or brief downpour, but make sure that you're weather aware during that time frame because it is possible. As we go into the evening commute, drier weather moves in, so weather's not going to be a huge player getting home after work and getting over to rodeo. Here's a look at that outline, the possibility of severe weather. Again, this is about a 5% chance, but watch out for that slight chance of gusty winds and small hail. The majority Majority of us are just going to have rumbles of thunder rolling on through. The payoff, Thursday, Friday into the weekend. Folks, it's beautiful. Sunny skies, cooler temperatures, looking beautiful, but do not forget to spring forward. Justin, over to you. Thank you very much, Britta. So let's get you updated on what's happening. That accident, unfortunately, is a fatality. Over at 3.30, just past Bayway, all lanes are closed. They're diverting folks off towards the feeder. And you can see up on I-10 where it's really starting to stack up with there as well. So everyone's trying to get off of 
3.30 to get onto the feeder to get back onto I-10 to work your way over there. So if you're in the Cody area, McNair, Wooster, for example, if you come in that way from Baytown, uh, make sure that you are aware of this. This is what it looks like. This is a live look. And there, the, there's the highway shut down. It, at least the feeder is moving. That's the good news. But still, it is uh, certainly going to continue to cause some slows around there as well. North Loop at Hardy looks pretty good. We've got a little bit of slowdown as you're working your way uh, down across the North Loop from 45. But it is okay and still moving at this point. And we're still dealing with the fog. This is 288 at Alameda, Genoa, and a couple of other slows that we're seeing. We've got a few stalls on 290 from Jersey Village, another one there from I-10, right as it meets up with the West Loop. And then, of course, if we jump in tight, you knew this was coming as well. Really starting to see things stack up across, basically from Jensen Drive all the way down across and towards Midtown. Drive times are starting to pick up here as well as we expected. Looking at about uh, 31 minutes in from the Woodlands, 33 from Kingwood, 20. They've come in from Baytown and just under a half hour in from Sugarland right now. Guys? Well, Super Tuesday is over, but now we could see a big Wednesday. Stocks looking to rebound with the big election day results. We'll check in with Maribel live at uh, New York. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Call it the Biden bounce. I'll tell you how today's trading is looking after Biden's Super Tuesday wins. That's head live in the Nasdaq market site in Times Square. All right, we're back at 625 this morning. Stocks uh, look for a boost after Super Tuesday. Maribel is live at the Nasdaq market site in Times Square. How are we doing? So far, we're doing okay. Good morning, Owen. But stocks indeed were battered yesterday. Today, it looks like a totally different story. We may see a big bounce back called the Biden bounce. U.S. stock futures have been soaring following Joe Biden's big wins on Super Tuesday. Investors have a much favorable view of Biden's middle-of-the-road views versus the more progressive policies of Bernie Sanders. Right now, check it out. Dow futures are up, ooh, more than 600 points at the open. Owen and Tanaya, just goes to show you everything impacts the markets. Definitely does, Maribel. Well, thank yeah. you for that. Well, Super Tuesday is now over, but for some people, it did not end until today. Massive lines that led to voters not getting it done until early in the morning. We'll show you how that happened in Houston. And I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. Dance, aerobics, cycling, boot camp. Have you ever left to work out with your ears ringing? Coming up, the damage your healthy habit could do to your hearing. The only way I have Haley is when I'm just pushing the big weights, you know. Uh, it just gets too loud in the ears there. Anyway, that's a total lie, by the way. Total lie. Anyway, we've got wet roads out there. The fog's an issue as well. Watch out for that. I'll have an update on, of course, that fatal accident. And your drive time's coming up here in just a bit. Justin, lifting the remote, it doesn't count. Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. It's all out of love. Uh, seriously, though, folks, we're tracking fog at the coast. We have wet roads, and we saw the line of thunderstorms to get through. It's a big weather day. We'll take you through it coming up. You can count on us. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Super Tuesday is over, but it turned into Super Wednesday for some people. How long some people waited to cast their ballot before finally getting to go home. Breaking news this morning, a peace deal in jeopardy. Uh, the United States firing upon Taliban forces days after signing a peace agreement. And it's a warm, humid, wet start to our Wednesday morning here. Keep those umbrellas handy today, but get ready to pack them up pretty soon because this rain will not last forever. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with us. 6.30 now on a Wednesday. I'm Tanaya Wright. I'm Owen Conflancy. Stapleton's on traffic. How are we yes, doing? Uh, so far, it's mainly just the fog and some of the wet weather out there. Nothing heavy, but it is out there. It's 6.30, so, you know, people are going to start uh, piling up here as we go uh, on the roads. And we'll uh, give you an update on that, um, unfortunately, the fatal accident out at 3.00. 30 for like Baytown folks are trying to get up towards I-10. Okay. Yep, and fog, light rain, that's what we're expecting for the rest of the morning drive. The heavy storms, they will hold off until after the morning rush, but they are on the way. Make sure that you're prepared. If you have lunch plans, picking up the kids after school, especially if you have an earlier release, you want to make sure that you're checking in with Frank's free weather app as those thunderstorms will be pushing in. That's a live look over our downtown camera. You're up in the cloud deck. We have light rain across the area. Exact track radar not looking too impressed. We do have some showers moving into Lake Livingston right now, but the majority of the metro area, it is that fine mist or drizzle mixing in with the fog. That's the line of storms that is just now moving its way through San Antonio, approaching Austin. There are reports of small hail, gusty winds, and that's a slight chance as that line moves into our area. The timeline, 10 a.m. to about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's pushing in from the west, so the farther west you live at Interstate 45, the sooner you're going to see those thunderstorms move in. Justin, the evening commute, weather conditions will 
will be improving, but we have to get to that point. I'll take you through the rest of your Wednesday coming up. Over to you. Thank you very much, Britta. Yeah, that's part of the problem here is that you're not only dealing with the fog, but of course it looks wet out there as well. This is a live shot from I-10 East at Lockwood as you're going in towards downtown and moving, but still there is going to be some wet roadway, so watch out for that. East Texas at I-10, this is looking A-OK -okay too, but you can see some of the fog there on the street lights. So as I just mentioned before, give yourself an extra 10 minutes or so and you should be A-OK. -okay. And here, unfortunately, is our biggest problem of the morning. That's Highway 330. That is shut down completely for a fatal accident. Police are diverting everybody off to the feeder. The feeder is at least moving, uh, but that is going to be a bit of a deal there, especially if you're coming in from the Cody area. Wooster as well, trying to get up towards I-10, seeing a bit of an improvement on that. That's always nice to see. A couple of stalls out towards 290 in the West Loop. We'll take a live look at the inner loopers and also your drive times coming up here in just a minute, guys. All right, Stapleton, thanks. 6.32 right now to Decision 2020 and all the overnight results from Super Tuesday. This morning, the race for the White House is starting to take shape. Former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders both had really big nights. All of the state's up for grabs were shared between them. Biden dominated the South, Sanders the West, and part of the Northeast. Only California this morning remains questionable. Both candidates spoke last night as the polls closed. But tonight, I tell you with absolute confidence, we are going to win the Democratic nomination. And we are going to defeat the most dangerous president in the history of this country. People are talking about a revolution. We started a movement. We've increased turnout. The turnout's turned out for us. A couple of protesters actually jumped on the stage during Biden's speech last night with let dairy die signs. They were quickly taken off stage by security. Biden recovered and uh, went back to speaking to the crowd. Democratic candidate Michael Bloomberg didn't have the best day. Despite support from Houston's Mayor Sylvester Turner, Bloomberg came in third in Harris County. Nationwide, the results were about the same, although he did pick up a win in American Samoa's caucus. When asked about dropping out of the race, his campaign manager was defensive. Is there a chance that Mayor Bloomberg is out tonight? Hi. Is there any chance? Are you kidding me? Have you looked around this place? Have you seen that setup? We have 5,000 people downstairs. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Well, so anyone that's expecting an early night, anyone um, who's expecting, um, you know, the kind of night where they can go home and go to sleep early should forget about it. Um, uh, as for Senator Elizabeth Warren, it's a rough night for her. She didn't even win her home state of um, Massachusetts, finishing third there. And she has not said if she will bow out of the race. The last Democratic candidate in the race turned out even lower than Warren, lower numbers than Warren. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard won a single delegate in American Samoa. She says she's still in the race, but right now she has the steepest mountain to climb out of all of those candidates. And I guess this is obvious, but President Trump indeed won the Republican primary across the country yesterday, obviously, basically running uh, unopposed uh, uh, when you look at um, the field of candidates that were out there in a few states. Uh, in Houston, long lines at polling locations left some voters waiting in long lines to cast their ballots. At TSU, they didn't wrap up until after 1.30 in the morning. Vincent Gravelli has been tracking the story this morning. He's live with us now. Uh, boy, a long night out there, Vincent, huh? Oh, and hundreds of voters were left waiting overnight at TSU. Some voters had to wait six hours to cast their ballot. The ones we spoke with say it was worth it. I want to get my vote in to voice my opinion, and I wasn't going to let none stop me. Check out this very, very long line at TSU. Some voters waited six hours to cast their ballots. It was long. It was real long. A lot of people walked away. Similar stories at different voting centers popped up across the county. Here at TSU, the voting center had eight voting machines, but the turnout was so high, election workers had to bring in 14 more. The parties have to run the primaries, so they choose the locations, they choose the election workers. Um, we just administer the election. They use our machines and we tabulate the results for them. Other problems caused delays too. A software glitch at midnight temporarily shut down voting machines, also the distribution of machines between political parties. So we started out equal. Now as the day went on and we saw that the Democratic turnout was much larger, we were constantly bringing in more equipment to several locations. Making matters worse, election officials believe the new voting
voting center system, which allows voters to cast their ballot at any center, added to the congestion. What I love about this crowd is everyone is in such a good mood. There have actually been people who, once they've voted, they've come back in line to just sort of cheer the rest of us on and encourage us to stay in line and not to leave. Yeah, definitely a very frustrating situation for voters, but most that we spoke with stayed optimistic, saying their vote and their voice counts. Reporting live from the county clerk's office, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Turning now to another big race for Texans, Vincent. Senator John Cornyn won the Republican primary for the U.S. Senate with a commanding lead. He has held that seat since being elected back in 2002. But on the Democratic side, Mary M.J. Hagar led. The former Air Force pilot is headed to a runoff, but against who? Well, that is still a mystery right now. Royce West and Christina Ramirez are close behind, and one of them is likely to be in the runoff, depending on those final precincts reporting. Uh, Harris County DA Kim Ogg defeated her challengers for the Democratic race for that office. She's getting her sights, uh, setting her sights, that is, now in the general election, where she'll face Republican challenger Mary Nan Huffman, who won the Republican primary, avoiding a runoff situation there. The race for Harris County attorney has been a surprise. Incumbent Vince Ryan on the edge of defeat. Christian Menifee running off with the race, uh, not out of the woods yet, though, to avoid a runoff. So we'll be watching those final numbers closely. And in the race for Texas Railroad Commissioner, it was an upset. James Wright upsetting incumbent Ryan Sitton for the Republican primary with 56% of the vote. He'll be challenged by the winner of the Democratic runoff, Krista Castaneda versus Roberto Alonzo. For more information on Decision 2020, make sure you stay with us on air and online at clicktohouston.com. Well, we are following some breaking news this morning in Afghanistan. The U.S. has carried out an airstrike today on Taliban fighters. Those fighters are accused of attacking an Afghan National Defense and Security Forces checkpoint. That strike came just hours after a call between President Trump and a Taliban chief negotiator yesterday. Now, this all comes only days after American and Taliban officials signed a peace deal in Qatar. Opening statements in Roger Durst's murder trial are expected to begin later this morning in Los Angeles. Durst is accused of killing his best friend 20 years ago to keep her from talking to investigators about his wife's 1982 disappearance. Durst is also accused of killing his Galveston neighbor, Louis Black, back in 2003. He admitted to it, but he did claim self-defense. Turning to the novel coronavirus. Uh, we're still in a wait-and-see pattern regarding a possible exposure case at Rice University. Tests for a researcher who may have been exposed have been sent to the CDC. We could get those results uh, as early as today. Uh, it may take up to three days, though. Seventeen others were exposed to that researcher, uh, but they're only being asked to self-quarantine for now. We're also tracking new information out of San Antonio. Federal officials apparently had planned to drop off several evacuated cruise ship passengers at a city mall. Uh, after they completed quarantine, but still the city filed a lawsuit to stop that move after a woman who tested positive for the virus was mistakenly released. 122 passengers were released yesterday, many taken to the San Antonio airport to be flown home. The death toll continues to rise from the virus. New numbers from Iran show 92 deaths, 3,000 infected. Several leaders there are among the infected. Worldwide, more than 90,000 people are infected with the novel coronavirus. This morning, our health reporter, Haley Hernandez, sits down with a local doctor to talk about it. They'll break down what it is and how we can all stay healthy. That'll be in a Facebook Live segment at 10 o'clock this morning. Time right now is 6.40. Coming up on the Today Show, local Olympian Simone Biles is preparing for a shot at Tokyo 2020. But while she does that, she is also battling distractions from the USA Gymnastics sex abuse scandal. She says that a lot has changed since her last Olympics. When you look back at the athlete you were back in Rio and who mm -hmm. you are today, what would you say is the biggest change in you? I would say my maturity, um, because going in, you're a rookie, now I'm a veteran, I know a lot more, I've been through a lot more, I've experienced a lot more, so I think that helps and has made me to the person I am today. In this exclusive interview that you will only see on today, you can hear what she has to say about the scandal and why she and fellow Olympian Allie Raisman have been fired up all week long.
641 here at Channel 2 News today. A little sloppy out there, Britta. How's it going? Oh, you can say that again. So here's the look into Galveston. Kind of hard to see anything. Typically, you would see the pier. You can barely make out the water. Your visibility is dropping down below a quarter of a mile at the direct coastline. Away from the coastline, it's light and patchy, but still an impact. You want to make sure that you're giving yourself that extra time. I'm also tracking some very thick fog for Hobby Airport and Bush Airport. Visibility at both airports between a quarter and a half a mile. Dense fog advisory is in effect until 9 a.m. for our coastal counties. Well, as we take a look out to the west, we have a line of thunderstorms moving over Interstate 35. It's moving in our direction, Justin. I'll give you the timeline and what we expect coming up. Yeah, it's going to make uh, lunchtime arriving around very interesting as well in terms of that timing. Thank you, Britta. We've got uh, Gessner and Katie Freeway looking good so far. The fog still the biggest issue. And of course, I'm going to give you a quick update, a live look at what it looks like. This is Highway 330 of Baytown East, that fatal accident. They're still investigating, so they've got everybody diverting off towards the feeder if you're trying to use that to get up towards uh, I-10 moving in the uh, westbound direction here. Drive times starting to stack up. We're getting close to 40 minutes in the woodlands. 36 coming in from Kingwood, 28 from Clear. Lake, and if you're coming in from Katie or Sugar Land, guys, it's going to take you about half hour. All right, thank you, Justin. Well, this morning, recovery efforts continue in Nashville, where a deadly tornado ripped through four counties this week. We go live to Nashville with the rising death toll this morning and how many folks are still missing. And I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. Up next, the kinds of workouts that might hurt your hearing. Getting on today. Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. Back at 644, they're recovering from a deadly tornado that ripped through parts of the area. 24 people at least have been killed. There are dozens more still missing. Our Roseanne Aragon is live there this morning in Germantown with more. Ro? That's right. I want to show you where we are. You can see downtown is right behind me. We're here in Germantown, and this goes for miles. Now that the sun is up, you can see crews are here addressing these down power lines, the rubble and debris. The crack of thunder marks a tragedy no one here in Middle Tennessee could forget. Daylight shows the roaring wind's wrath, spanning more than 100 miles from here in East Nashville to 80 miles east in Putnam County, where officials there say at least 18 people died. The death toll now at 24 and potentially rising. As officials square up their count, they know dozens more in Putnam County are unaccounted for. There are folks uh, missing. We're, we have deployed teams across the state in a search and ref, ref, uh, rescue effort. Homes ripped away, businesses and livelihoods shattered, hearts broken. This rubble is a haunting reminder of a nightmare that won't go away. FEMA is already on the ground and I'll be going there on Friday. Our hearts are full of sorrow for the lives that were lost it's a vicious thing, those tornadoes. Darkness is here with tens of thousands of people without power. But near this now unfamiliar O'Reilly Auto Parts, this empty Kroger in Germantown, you can't help but hear. Free food here, free food here, free hot dogs. The presence of something so warm. And just come down and get a drink, a hot dog, you know, something to eat and, you know, stay warm. Hearts melt, people helping people, something no tornado could ever take away. And it just make you happy giving back to people that need it. You know, if it was me, I would hope somebody would help me the same way. A ray of light through all of this. This is just a snapshot of the devastation. There is no doubt there's plenty of work left to be done. Reporting live from Nashville, Tennessee, Roseanne Aragon, KPRC, Channel 2 News. And still waiting to hear about the fate of those missing. Thank you, Ro, for the live update. So sad seeing that. Time right now is 6.47. Let's go to Britta now with more on our forecast locally. Yes, and this morning, you need to make sure that you're not running behind. We're waking up to fog and wet roads, and we have some thunderstorms in the mix for later on this morning. This is a live look at the Southwest Freeway. You need your low beams. Take it slow out there. Your visibility coming in along the Southwest Freeway about a mile, but there's a few spots that drop down to a quarter of a mile. Bush Airport, Hobby Airport directly at the coast, and we do have a dense fog advisory at the coast until 9 o'clock this 
morning. In addition to that, we have our eyes on those thunderstorms that are moving through San Antonio and Austin. They are going to be pushing through. Ahead of it, just a few light showers and that fine mist or drizzle for the metro area. And then we have a few thunderstorms just to the northwest of Livingston, but a lot more to get through. This line is moving in our direction. We're expecting it between 10 a.m. and about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So the farther west you live at 45, the earlier you're going to see those thunderstorms roll through. There's a slight chance that we could see severe weather with this line of storms. I'll detail that threat out coming up. All right, thank you very much. Better time saver traffic. So far, so good. Although, two big issues this morning. The rain that's coming is going to be one. Notice that we've got uh, some wet streets out there. This is a live look at uh, Southwest Freeway at Chimney Rock. So, starting to stack up as you're moving in towards the West Loop. Same thing on the feeder. And the fog is the other big issue as well. She just mentioned visibility is anywhere from about a quarter mile around Bush Airport. Heads up there if you're trying to take a flight this morning. Same thing down in Galveston. And unfortunately, that does encompass most of our highways here as well. A couple of stalls out on 290. We've got one more moving in between I-10 and the West Loop, and let's go out to the west side there, starting to stack up as you get from 99 moving over towards Mason and Fry Road, and then same thing, West Park really starting to uh, pile up here from Mission Bend over towards Highway 6. Just give yourself a little bit of extra time because of the wet roads and, of course, obviously the fog as well. Drive time's now 41 minutes coming in from the Woodlands, 32 from Katy, and right at about a half hour if you're coming up the Gulf Freeway from Clear Lake. Well, it's good for your heart, but could a workout be bad for your hearing? Health reporter Haley Hernandez is here with this story. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, guys. So we're thinking about those group classes where the music's pumping, the instructor is yelling into a microphone, and in the time that it would take you to warm up, 10 to 15 minutes, you could be damaging your hearing. The music, the iron, the instructor's microphone. <laughs> Your ears are taking in a lot of noise while working out, and it can add up, literally. For every 15 minutes you spend in noisy environments, Dr. Michelle Udayamurthy says your ears are taking a hit. You hear like ringing after your workout class or your um, ears are muffled feeling. That's a sign that you might have had some hearing damage during that class. 80 decibels is the volume of a vacuum or loud movie. Hundreds is a rock concert, which is hard on the hearing. In the confined space of a gym, Dr. Udaya Murthy says the volume here can be in that danger zone. So what can you do? She says you can ask the gym to turn music down. But if you're shy about being that person. The biggest thing is wearing earbuds during workout classes, especially the ones that are high volume. Volume, but the earbuds, that's a really good way of protecting your hearing. So obviously she's talking about those like soft plasticky earbuds to block the noise. Earbuds that are worn for music during workouts inside your ear. Those can also be harmful since people tend to turn those up in an attempt to cancel out outside noise. However, if you are exercising outdoors, the doctor says she'd really prefer you to use those earbuds instead of noise canceling headphones. Noise canceling headphones would also not allow you to hear traffic and people around you, which would be safety. Concern. I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. So do you know, during like That's an true. airplane ride, those are like super convenient. Mm -hmm. But if you're working out outside, you would just want to be able to hear your surroundings. Yeah. Can't hear the car coming up on your side. Yeah, it's That's dangerous. Like real. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hear you now. Thank you. <laughs> I'll check the traffic and weather. Six fifty one at Channel Two. For many people in the Houston area, Super Tuesday stretched into Wednesday as long lines left people waiting for several hours to cast their ballots. Our Vincent Crivelli is at the Harris County Clerk's Office uh, with what they're saying about those long lines. Good morning. Oh, and some of the long lines were over six hours long. The county clerk blames the lines on a new voting system. Overnight, hundreds of voters were left standing in line to cast their ballots. Election officials blame the long lines on high voter turnout at unprepared voting centers. They say at the beginning of the day, voting machines were divided evenly among Democrats and Republicans, but more Democrats showed up to vote, so they had to reallocate resources. Officials also believe the new voting system, which allows voters to go any center to vote, added to the long lines. For now, reporting live from the Harris County Clerk's Office, Vincent Pavelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Top stories this morning. Country legend Willie Nelson taking the stage at the rodeo this evening. This is his 11th appearance at the event. There are still tickets available if you would like to catch the show. All the fun starts tonight at 645. The Today Show is coming up next. Now let's check in with Craig, live from New York. Let's see what's ahead. Good morning. 
Hey, Owens and I, good to see both of you coming up in just a few minutes here on Today. We will, of course, have complete coverage of those Super Tuesday results, including what went down in Harris County last night, this morning, how that huge night for Joe Biden just transformed the Democratic race for president entirely. Also ahead this morning, we're going to catch up with the world's greatest gymnast, Simone Biles. This morning, how Simone is feeling with the Olympics, believe it or not, less than five months away. And what she hopes to soon see from the embattled USA Gymnastics Organization. And we've also got something very special planned on this Wednesday morning, live from Florida. Carrie Sanders doing what Carrie Sanders does. He is going to help release a manatee rescued off the coast back into the wild, and he'll do it live right here on Today. Owen, tonight, we'll send it back to you in Houston. Nice, looking forward to it. Do that. it live! <laughs> yeah. All right, that sounds Always great. Always live. Yeah. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> Here's traffic with Stapleton. <laughs> It's still the best. Ever. Forever, right? It is the best. If you don't know, YouTube it. It's not safe for work, but just YouTube it. It's great. All right, here's a live look at the nor uh, North Loop up at Main Street. Notice that the fog is out there as well. As you try to work your way eastbound there, you really can't see into it. So be careful with that. In addition, we're still watching some trouble there. Now that we're getting into daylight, you can see there's that fatal accident over at Highway 330, just past Bayway. Everybody being diverted down onto the feeder. So if you're out that way trying to get up towards I-10, uh, be mindful that that is out there as well. It's got some stalls around the area. North Loop as you work your way down towards the uh, inner loop as well. Let's jump towards 288. Start to stack up from the Beltway on up towards the South Loop. And a quick look at your drive times. Looks like this. We'll keep things uh, right now at about 40 minutes in the Woodlands. 22 from Cypress and about 30 working in from Katy. Britta? And this morning, it's all about the light rain, but we have thunderstorms on the way. The timeline, 10 a.m. to about 2 p.m. Right now, they're blasting over Interstate 35. They have been producing some small hail and gusty winds. So here's a look at the future cast model. We'll pause things at 11 a.m. The line is going to be breaking apart, but holding together just enough that the majority of us will have a brief downpour, also some thunder and lightning. Notice south of I-10, we're not anticipating as much because, yes, the line is going to fall apart. By 2 p.m., it's moving east of Interstate state 45 and then we clear up quite nicely the evening commute will be more dry than wet and very quiet but between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. make sure that you're weather aware and watching the weather conditions of course we'll keep you updated on social media and here on channel 2 and Justin and I will be doing a Facebook live in a few minutes to keep you updated yep we got national pound cake day Ooh, always time for which that. is always good do it live